Zero Accounting Software 2023, Adjusting Entry Related to Unearned Revenue or Customer Deposit. Get ready to become an accountant hero with Zero 2023. First, a word from our sponsor. Well, actually, these are just items that we picked from the YouTube Shopping Affiliate Program, but that's actually good for you because these aren't things that were just given to us from some large corporation which we don't even use in exchange for us selling them to you. These are things that we actually researched, purchased, and used ourselves. Here we have a Western Digital WD Elements 20 terabyte USB 3.0 desktop external hard drive we use as part of our backup system, noting that if you lower the number of terabytes of storage, the price will lower dramatically as well. When you're thinking about a backup system, you're usually thinking about an online system or an external hard drive system like this, or ideally some combination between the two, giving you some redundancy. You can also work directly from an external hard drive like this, but there are some drawbacks to doing that. One being, if you use this as your primary drive you're working from, it's no longer a backup drive, and you're gonna need a backup system, possibly another external hard drive and or some kind of cloud backup system. And if you're working on something that takes up a lot of short-term memory, a lot of RAM as you're working on it, such as video editing, the external hard drive can slow up the system. So you might wanna come up with some kind of system where you download the project you're working on to your computer, to your C drive, or possibly to a solid state drive, which is a much more expensive uh, external hard drive as you do the work. Once the work is done, then save the project to an external hard drive such as this. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com where we have many different courses. You can purchase one at a time or have a subscription model giving you access to all the courses. Courses which are well organized have other resources like Excel files and PDF files to download and no commercials. Here we are in our custom Zero homepage. Going into the company file we set up in a prior presentation, Get Great Guitars. We're going to duplicate some tabs to put reports in like we do every time. Right click in the tab up top so we can duplicate it. Right click in the duplicated tab so we can duplicate it again. We'll go back to the tab to the middle, Accounting drop down. We want to open the balance sheet. This is a comparative balance sheet, but if you don't have it, you can open the standard one. Tabbing to the right, Accounting drop down income statement. I'm opening a comparative income statement. If you don't have it, you can open the standard one. Back to the tab to the middle. We're doing adjusting entries. Remembering that adjusting entries are typically done as of a point in time, usually the end of the month or year for us. It's going to be the cutoff date, the end of February, February 28. There are usually at least two accounts affected. At least one balance sheet account and one income statement account is the normal layout for the adjusting entries. They're typically timing entries, although they could have some other entries we'll take a look at in future presentations that kind of deviate from that standard model. So we're now looking at the unearned revenue. So I'm going to scroll down. It's a liability account down here that we have recorded with the, the zero software, the 450. Now the unearned revenue, when you when you like learn uh, the accounting concepts and adjusting entries in uh, from an accounting book or something like that, the unearned revenue is usually one of the most confusing accounts to understand because it's gonna to relate to businesses that are a bit uh, unusual oftentimes. It's not the normal course of business oftentimes. So let's take a look at our flowchart to think about how the unearned revenue might come about, what types of businesses would result with the unearned revenue, how we can track unearned revenue then in the zero software and what kind of adjustments might we need for unearned revenue. So let's go back to our flowchart this is from the QuickBooks desktop homepage, but we're just using it to look at the flow of the forms because it's just a nice flow chart which works well with just about any kind of accounting cycle. Now we're down here on the customer side of things, the revenue cycle, the income cycle, where at the end of the cycle we expect revenue to be going up or cash to be going up. 
in essence, for goods and services that we provided to a customer. Now, the flow of the cycle will be dependent upon what kind of industry we are in. Whether we have an accrual basis or a cash basis will depend in part on what kind of industry we are in. If we're in, for example, gig work, and we're just getting paid by YouTube or some other platform, we can probably be in a cash-based system and even easier than a cash-based system, waiting until the revenue clears the bank and then recording it basically as a deposit form with the bank feeds. However, if we have a cash register situation, we're still on a cash-based system, but then we'll typically have to record the sales as they happen, put them into some kind of clearing account because we're gonna have to group those sales together in a lump sum when we make the deposit in our zero system so that the deposit matches what physically goes into the bank account so that we can do a bank reconciliation. But we're still getting paid at, this, you know, at the same point in time that we do the work. Or we have an accrual system like a law firm or an accounting firm where we do the work first and then we have to invoice the client and that means we're increasing accounts receivable, the other side going to revenue, then we have to collect on that and make the deposit. However, you can imagine situations where you get the money first, you get paid first, so you receive the payment, and then you do the work, and you're gonna invoice when you do the work, and then you're gonna have to match out the payment that you received in advance uh, to the invoice. So this is kind of a problematic situation oftentimes because again, the normal flow is to do the work first and then get paid usually. Now, what kind of industries would this happen in? The classic example is like a newspaper or magazine type of industry because those are ones on a subscription model where you sell the subscription and you get the revenue before any work is done. Therefore, if, you're on, if you try to be in a cash-based system with that kind of model, which is also more common these days because that's basically the model for a subscription online service or something like a website or something like that. Uh, so if you try to stay in a cash-based system, what'll happen is you're just gonna say, okay, I sold a year's subscription. I'm just gonna record revenue when they pay me, even though I have not yet done the work. But technically that's not quite right. That's not exactly right for an accrual-based system. What you should be doing is recording it as unearned revenue when you get the money because you haven't given them the subscription yet. You, they might be locked into it really, but, but it's kind of the same thing as if uh, you prepaid your rent, right? If you prepaid your rent, you, you, you still really haven't incurred the rent because you haven't consumed you know, the rent. So if, if you get paid on the other side, if they pay you, you haven't really earned the revenue even though you're gonna do the work or provide the subscription in the future. So therefore, what you wanna do normally is put it on the books. This is the classical kind of book problem uh, for an accounting textbook, right? We would put it on the books as unearned revenue, a liability account, and then increase the cash. And then we'd have to go in here periodically and determine whether or not we have earned the revenue and when we have earned the revenue periodically, monthly, for example, we decrease unearned revenue and the other side then goes to revenue as we earn it. So that's one kind of system that we might have where we have that, that issue. Uh, another one, you might have like concert tickets or something like that. That's another kind of thing where you're gonna sell the concert tickets before you have the concert. And then when the concert happens, then all that revenue that you have generated should be recognized, you would think at that time. So it's just a timing difference. Now, another common way that this happens is with a deposit. So with rental property, for example, you might collect like a, the last month's rent uh, for the rental property. So you kind of have a prepayment in essence, you might call that a customer deposit. And the customer deposit, when you, when you say customer deposit, it sounds kind of funny because you kind of feel like that should be an asset, maybe it's a deposit, but it's a liability because it's the prepayment basically of the, the renter, or it might be a deposit that's contingent upon uh, whether or not there's a problem with the with the with the place at the end, they always take the deposit anyways, right? I don't know, but it's a liability either way because you owe the deposit back uh, until you provide the last month of use of the of the rental property, or or they've damaged the property and you keep the deposit at that point in time. And it also comes up in our case, the way we saw it come up is we might sell expensive things like guitars and you might have someone come in and say, I want this particular guitar 
and we say we don't have that color or whatever of the guitar. So what we will do is we'll order it for you. But in order for us to order that weird guitar you want, that pink plaid guitar that we don't think we could sell anywhere else because it's gross, but if you want it, we'll order it for you. Then we want the down payment. So you have to give us the down payment to lock in. And so we collect the money first and then we complete uh, the sale process. So that's what that's what we did here. Now let's just kind of think about that over here. Zero has a has a neat system for us to be able to record the the unearned revenue account as a liability, and it's actually better, I think, than other software like a QuickBooks Online, which doesn't have that kind of c capacity as well. So let's think about. So so we don't really need to do the same kind of adjusting entry that we have if you're doing comparative. If you're looking at comparative courses that we've compared this to like a QuickBooks Online, for example, because because Zero has a little technique uh, that kind of makes it so it works out for us. So let me show you what the problem is. The problem is that the accounts receivable here, if someone gives us a down payment on the inventory that we're going to apply later, then normally you would say, OK, well, then I'd have to have the receive payment. I've, re I've got to record a an increase to cash. And the other side is going to go to unearned revenue. But usually if I record a receive payment type of transaction, then it's going to record the other side, you know, to income instead of instead of unearned revenue. So that's kind of the issue that that comes up. If I record a receive payment to unearned revenue, uh, then I don't have the same tracking for unearned revenue because what I want to do in the future is turn around and send out an invoice. And when I send out the invoice, I want it to be able to to tie out or match out to the deposit that I received in advance. And normally the account that kind of tracks everything by by customer is the accounts receivable account. So a lot of times software will people on the bookkeeping side will actually create a negative accounts receivable, not a negative accounts receivable in total, but for that particular customer. In other words, if I look at the sub ledger, I'm going to duplicate a tab to the right. I'm going to duplicate uh, the tab and we'll go into a sub ledger for accounts receivable accounting drop down. And then I'm going to go into reports and we'll go into the payables and receivable. And I'm going to go into aged receivable summary report. So a lot of times in other software like a QuickBooks Online, one of the easiest ways to do this from a bookkeeping standpoint is for a particular customer, you put in a negative receivable because because it's a credit to their receivable account. That's why they, you get that term. We're going to credit your account, right? It's a credit to the receivable account that you can then apply to an invoice. Now, that's not exactly right because we don't really want a negative receivable. We want a positive uh, liability account. And, and zero has that cool system to be able to do that. So if I go into this this account, let me just show you uh, what that looks like. If I go into the asset, the the balance sheet, and we're going to go down to unearned revenue. I'm going to drill down on the 450 here, and let's see one of these increases. Here's a receive payment form, and so you can see here that it's got this different color uh, to it, I'm going to say. Uh, and that's because we entered it as uh, the prepayment. So in other words, another way we could see it if I go back here and go back and then I go to this first tab, I'm going to hit the plus button. I'm not actually going to record it, but I'm going to go to the receive money form. And let's say we go into the checking account. And then here, instead of a direct payment, we said it was uh, a prepayment. And so that prepayment will allow us to record it to the proper account and makes it like yellow like this, right? To unearn revenue and it gives us that sub ledger allowing us to track it by customer. So then when I go to my, my contacts over here and I go to all contacts, I should be able to track this, this information, the prepayment and uh, the payments by customers. So, and that's one of the problems uh, in other software typically because you don't have the sub ledger to be able to track it within the sub ledger here. So, so we don't. So normally, if you're tr if you're comparing this to QuickBooks Online, 
we would have recorded a negative receivable and do an adjusting entry to increase the accounts receivable and record the proper uh, 450 as a liability periodically so that we can have that breakout periodically but still be able to tie everything together uh, and be able to apply out the prepayment and the future invoice in the same software and then we would do a reversing entry but zero because it has this nice feature allowed us to break out the unearned revenue without it causing any problems to us on the internal uh, bookkeeping side of things so we're not actually going to do the adjusting entry here we're just going to talk it over and then the other way you might still have to deal with unearned revenue is the classical uh, kind of business model where you have a subscription model like the newspaper or now computer applications if you have that kind of system what's going to happen is your unearned revenue you might record like all of your revenue pr originally to unearned revenue right because all of your revenue is prepaid when you receive it now you might try not to do that you might say hey look that's too tedious if i don't i maybe i can tr get away with if i recording all my revenue when i receive it as revenue when i get paid even though i have a subscription model which might not be an issue for taxes if you're in the united states because uh, for taxes they usually want you to record you know the irs would like to get paid sooner anyways so they would like you if there's prepayments and you have the money then you might be required to pay you know to, to pay them the money that you received even if you haven't earned it but from an accrual standpoint it's not exactly right right so you have to kind of think about if you have a subscription model what reporting do you need to do do i have to do this added accrual step or not and if you have to do the added accrual step you would what you would normally do is you have to basically record everything uh as a as a prepayment like this and then and then you would reduce it uh periodically so then you would reduce it taking it out of the prepayment and recording the uh expense i mean revenue periodically so you would be decreasing this and recording the revenue so uh, and note you might be able to automate that uh fairly you might be able to say okay every time i i sell a year's subscription or something like that then i'm going to put it on the books as a, a liability and then you might put automatic invoices or or something that will 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 automatically record the transactions periodically or monthly that will reduce the unearned revenue account and record the revenue uh periodically so you might be able to kind of automate the system but whatever you do it's clearly going to be more tedious to track the unearned revenue as a liability if you have that kind of subscription model kind of system and then again the other the other way this unearned revenue comes up is with this deposit kind of system where zero's capacity to do it the way we did it here works quite well because i can just record the unearned revenue as an advanced deposit i can track that advanced deposit internally uh on in in by customer and then when i make an invoice i can um i can apply out the the advanced payment to the invoice at that point in time and it doesn't mess up the internal bookkeeping and it actually properly records the breakout between the uh, unearned revenue and the accounts receivable and and the timing of the revenue so that's the general concept with the unearned revenue so we don't really need an adjusting entry i just want to talk out that because that's a common kind of adjusting entry that you'll see in a book problem and i just want to point out that zero does have that capacity that seems in, to, to be better than other software like a quickbooks online to be able to to track that unearned revenue and that's why we're doing it this way uh for that uh for the unearned revenue